Hey everybody, warm day. Um, some updates I want to share with you as I uh, take this little walk regarding uh, my last Oscar Grant video. Uh, first of all, I talk with my source again and um, I asked my source some questions that some of you posed in the comments and in messages to me. Uh, first of all, the question, was it a racist hit? My source contends that it was not. He says that from talking with people, from talking uh, with people involved, who are involved in the, this matter, and uh, from his own experience, that uh, Officer Mesley was simply an inexperienced cop who got excited. Uh, my source says that Officer Mesley did not follow procedure, that he should have handcuffed him, first of all. Um, and that uh, my source also says that Officer Mesley is not a rogue cop and rogue he said if, if it was a racist hit my source could says that if it were a racist hit we wouldn't have known about it that Oscar Grant would have been just quote another a dead person uh, apparently this sort of thing is done in law enforcement um, and the kind of people that do it are considered rogue cops but they would make it look like simply another death my source says they would not have done it in front of hundreds of BART people or BART passengers. Um, my source goes on to explain that rogue cop elements, like Meserly is not, are necessary, although they are fewer in police forces around the Bay Area, if not the country, but he's, he knows the Bay Area and knows uh, the East Bay very well. He says that through attrition, or simply, in the case of the rioters, being forced out or fleeing the country, uh, many of these officers are less than they used to be, but they're necessary for something he calls containment. What does he mean? He says that there's only a certain type of mentality, a certain kind of person that wants to deal with a drug dealer, uh, a certain kind of person that is essentially fearless. Now, do I want to be in that culture? No. Do I want to be a part of that culture? No. Do you? Chances are, you don't. But there are people who work in the police force who have no problem becoming a part of that culture if only to do the job they're assigned to do, which is to basically catch a criminal. Um, some of the people who were involved in that were the writer's cops, for example. But again, back to the point, Officer Mesley is not one of them. Now, someone else asked the question if we were saying that that justifies or if my source is saying that that justifies why Oscar, Oscar Grant was shot. No, it does not. And for anyone to come away with that idea, they are sadly mistaken. That is not the case at all. My source says it does not justify what happened to Oscar Grant. He is very sorry that happened to him. But Officer Mesley made a mistake. A mistake. Now, something else has happened. Uh, the video that I did, the iReport version, was picked up by uh, first none other than SF Citizen, who apparently contacted Phil Bronstein, the executive vice president and executive editor of the Chronicle, or editor at large now is his title, and um, a person who I've met and who's, uh, who I like and respect. At any rate, uh, Phil put it on his blog, Bronstein at Large, and um, said that it's that uh, it added more information to an already muddled case. My words, not his. But uh, also made the point of really emphasizing uh, my question if whether or not the drugs were planted in Mr. Grant. Now, on that matter, my source says that was not the case, that the drugs were already there um, and that this is something that is commonly done, uh, a fact that was backed up by yet another source. Now, uh, back to Bronstein. Bronstein chose to focus on that aspect of my video, which was put in the form of a question as if my video was saying that drugs were definitely planted in Oscar Grant. Well, of course, he left a question mark, but he made that the focus, and that wasn't the, uh, the subject of my video. So his video, or his blog post, was picked up by Black Voices and a couple of other sources. But then I was alerted to this by someone else. Uh, the link was taken down. It was gone. So I checked and inquired why by email to Phil and got an email back from none other than 
Zoe Stagg. Now, who is Zoe Stagg? If you pay attention to online stars and so on, Zoe Stagg is an online star, but she's now, as it turns out, doing multimedia for Phil Bronstein. Now, how do I know it was Zoe Stagg? Because she said in the email, hi, I'm Zoe Stagg. Okay. So, um, I love her work. Didn't know she was working for Phil as multimedia producer. Interesting. At any rate, she claims in the email that she sent to me that the San Francisco Chronicle newsroom had issues with my, quote, sources information, unquote. I don't know what issues, though, they were. Now, it, is it that it was a single source uh, as opposed to multiple sources? Perhaps. Or is it, is it that I didn't disclose my source? Perhaps. But, again, there are people, for example, Robert Gammon at the East Bay Express, who have written articles where they do not disclose their sources. And I might add, they do not disclose their source singular. Singular. If that's the issue. And I have a feeling it may very well be the issue. So, but my question back to Zoe, which I haven't got an answer to, is if it's Phil Bronstein's blog and not officially the Chronicle's blog, in other words, it's not under another editor, why would they go back and tamper with Phil's blog in that way? And have they done that before? Interesting. I informed Zoe Stagg that, uh, among other things, you can't really take something down off the internet like that. It's cached. So if you want to read the cached version of what Phil put up, all you have to do is click on the link over here. Uh, so it's still on the internet, even though they took it down. I don't know why they did that, but they did. Oh well. I could be more sinister and say, are they uh, perhaps somewhat upset that perhaps they think that I broke in a story that they wanted to break? That would be sad. I don't think that's the case, though. Just speculating. Um, but that's the latest. Now, the other question that I think someone else had regarding my source is, uh, does my source believe that this matter um, was not only race-based but deliberate? In other words, regardless of race, it was an execution. No. Again, to emphasize, my source says this was complete accident, and that Officer Mesley was an inexperienced law enforcement official with BART police. It's not to take anything away from Bar Police, but the my source says that that you get from, in Bar Police the people that perhaps didn't make it through the other academies, or uh, not to say that they're less than, but my source is a well-placed person, very, very, very well respected in the Bay Area. Um, I can't question him, but that's as, as much as I can say there. So that rounds out everything right there. I um, also also forgot to mention that. I had contacted uh, CNN about this, and Rick Sanchez wrote me back that he was going to look into it. Uh, haven't heard back from him as well. So it's kind of interesting It's uh, to me how some of the older media heads uh, tend to, in a sense, block some news. Or if they have an issue, they won't communicate with you what that is. Whereas the new media people will ask you what's going on. They will ask questions. Uh, they do want information disclosed. But I want to go back to the central point here. You know, no one is saying that Oscar Grant deserved the fate that uh, he was given at all. We're all very sad about, I have said before, very sad. And I've said before also that, and I still contend that law enforcement should be re-examined in terms of how it does things so that this sort of action, this act, act, activity, action, this uh, accident never occurs again. All right.